Its gaze penetrates you. Its athletic body is full of grace. Its wild, feral temper draws you in. Once this fiery bull on four wheels has been unleashed, it is nearly impossible to restrain. Its native tongue is Italian. It roars with all its might across the asphalt. It's enough to switch on the engine. Its angular face is totally unique. Everything about it has been designed for ultimate performance. Incredible sound. It sweeps across the racetracks of this world like a hurricane. That is more or less kind of miracle. Its name is Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Lamborghini is totally different from any other brand in the world. For more than 50 years, Lamborghini has been producing super sports cars in Santa Gata Bolognese in the north of Italy. Around 1,800 people are employed on the factory grounds covering 160,000 square meters. 80 of them manufacture the Lamborghini Huracan Evo in their own part of the factory. Robots are almost non-existent in the Italian manufactory. The only job taken on by machines is moving the body and other heavy components around. 13 of these powerhouses are made here every day. The extensive range of models requires solid workmanship. On average, around 2,500 new Huracans leave this factory every year. The Huracan Evo is Lamborghini's extreme athlete. 640 horsepower catapult the 1.4-ton Noble Coupe from 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds. This Italian cracks the 200 kilometer an hour mark in nine seconds. The super sports car's top speed is more than 325 kilometers an hour. A white body is being prepared for assembly. The heavy chassis weighing 262 kilograms consists of aluminum and carbon. Two mechanics roll the car's skeleton to the assembly line. First, they remove the doors because they need room to work inside the body. Over the next 14 hours, more than 4,000 parts will be assembled step by step to form a brand new sports car. A mechanic installs the wiring harness into the car. This is the noble two-seater's nerve system, as it were. It supplies the electronic stability control, the steering system, and the four-wheel drive with electricity. There are about 2.7 kilometers of cable in the Huracan Evo. The mechanics have exactly 35 minutes at every assembly station. Then the factory display changes and the assembly line starts moving again. To facilitate work at the production line, the workers use a special assembly rig. It can lift up the Lambo-to-be and turn it over on its side at an angle of 90 degrees. This makes it much easier for the mechanics to work on the underbody of the chassis. As soon as the employees have installed the last cables and hooked them up to the 12-volt battery, the car has its own network. At station four, another team prepares the gas tank so it can be installed onto the frame. Before it can be placed onto the chassis, this employee first hooks it up to the gas line. Then he takes the tank to the assembly line where a colleague of his first sprays the tank with silicone. The surface becomes smoother and this makes it easier to slide the tank exactly into the right position. The Huracan Evo has two gas tanks. That is very important. This way, the fuel can be distributed evenly in the back of the car. Now, the mechanic connects the electronic wiring. And finally, the gas tank's fuel fillers are installed. The conduits to the fighting bull's elixir of life. 
There's room for 90 liters of fuel here. In normal driving mode, that should be enough for 700 kilometers. Next to the main assembly line, separate car parts are pre-assembled in parallel. Just now, mechanics are assembling the dashboard. The team is working at three working places simultaneously. The employees have to put together 34 parts per instrument panel during a single clock cycle. This panel is entirely covered in leather. So as not to damage the fine material, the team wears gloves while installing the instruments. Once the mechanics have properly installed the speedometer and the air vents, they add the glove compartment, including the cup holder. The choice of colors and materials right up to individual stitchings is almost limitless. A logistical challenge for the whole assembly crew. This mechanic maneuvers the finished dashboard into the cockpit with a special lifting device. Lamborghini cockpits are mostly covered in leather, Alcantara, or carbon fiber. Maximum quality has top priority. The biggest challenge for me is we need to have, uh, for our process, uh, for our uh, flexibility, a line which is completely manual. There is no robots. All the activities are done by, by people. But on the other side, we need to have the maximum quality and the maximum repetitability. All the car has to have the same performance, but has to be different in terms of content. The net price of the basic version of the Huracan Evo is 184,000 euros. But from there, the sky is the limit. The car can be customized to any desire a customer may have, and everything costs extra. Despite the creative leeway, a Lamborghini is always instantly recognizable. The clear lines and sharp edges give the Italian its unmistakable face. These drawings from the Centro Stile, Lamborghini's design center, form the basis of every fighting bull. Since 2004, the design team has been developing new ideas in the in-house studio. Here, together with the German chief designer, the crew has been working on new prototypes, always staying true to the distinctive basic line which was created by design icon Marcello Gandini. Ultimately, the Gandini line is this continuous line, the silhouette. Even without the wheels, you can see this is a Lamborghini. I tried it once with my son. I drew this line and he immediately said, that's a Lamborghini, Daddy. It's the strongest DNA in the entire automotive sector, this architecture that only the Lamborghini has. The position of the side windows, which makes very sharp angles, it's completely different from other super sports cars. They usually have a dome-like roof. If you look closely, you may discover that the Huracan design is based on a strong prototype living in the ocean. If you look at a rough sketch of a Lamborghini, you can see a shark in it. A shark is an extremely elegant creature, very self-confident. And this self-confidence is what characterizes the basic form of any Lamborghini. The Huracan Evo now receives its most important organ at the assembly line, the 10-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. Lamborghini has been using this high-powered engine since 2003. It's a rarity among vehicle propulsion systems. It's the heart of a bull that beats within the Huracan Evo, a 5.2-liter V10 naturally aspirated engine. It has a fuel consumption of 13.7 liters per 100 kilometers, and it sits in front of the rear axle of the sports coupe, so its weight is evenly distributed between both axles. This makes the vehicle very agile and extremely stable in corners. First, the mechanics connect the engine with the transmission. They install the electronics, the cooling system, and parts of the exhaust system. What makes a naturally aspirated engine special is that it doesn't have a turbocharger. 
it sucks in the air directly without being compressed. This way, if you step on the gas, the power is immediately available. You can hear the sound of the air being sucked in, which would otherwise sound muffled. And more sound means more emotion. The next chassis appears on the assembly line, ready for the so-called marriage with the 640 horsepower engine. The team heaves the behemoth weighing more than 250 kilograms into the car with a crane. This is a very delicate and complicated moment during which nothing should go wrong. The Huracan Evo's compact construction allows for only a few millimeters of room between the engine and the car's frame. Any collision could damage the cables and wires. Very slowly, the mechanics navigate the high-performance drive into place. Carefully, they lower the engine into the body. It's a tight fit in the engine bay. Despite it being such a complicated procedure, only 10 minutes later, the 10-cylinder engine is perfectly aligned and can be screwed onto the chassis by the mechanics. Our people are, in this station, the best one we have, because there has to be skill to put the engine in the perfect and the only possible path in order to avoid any collision and to have the perfect assemble of this part. Blancpain GT World Challenge. Today, the competitors in the world's greatest GT3 series step on the gas at the Nürburgring. Starting for the Italian racing team is its highest performing model, the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. It's equipped with the DNA of a production vehicle and the same high RPM 10-cylinder engine. But it's pretty clear that this particular machine was made exclusively for the racetrack. It's the most extreme version of the Lamborghini Huracan. It's as low and as wide as can possibly be and has all the aerodynamic parts you can possibly have. We've tried to put the most efficient aerodynamics onto the track. Efficient means generating as much downforce as possible, which enables you to take curves at high speeds, to brake late and to have good traction. At the same time, it's important to have as little drag as possible. That means you need aerodynamics to reach good top speeds on the straight. Lamborghini's company driver drives for the Austrian Grasser Racing Team. The racing rules dictate two drivers per car. Things are looking good for the Italian racing driver and his German colleague, because Bortolotti already secured pole position in qualifying. The pit crew is getting the GT3 ready for the race. Every racing team has its own strategy to obtain optimum vehicle weight, the perfect tire pressure, and the ideal fuel mixture. The crew is adjusting the race car to fit the track's conditions on a portable wheel alignment system. But the rear slicks are causing problems. The demands made on a car's rear tires are always rather great because the weight of the engine lies in the back. So in order to obtain the right balance for the race, we have to adjust the chassis setup in such a way as to make slightly bigger demands on the front tires and slightly less on the rear tires, so we can cover the distance nicely and the car handles neutrally. The racing variants of the Huracan are also produced in the Italian factory. What's remarkable is that the motorsport department, Squadra Corse, uses the same main assembly line as the Lamborghini series production. So apart from the Huracan Evo, the extreme sport variants Super Trofeo and GT3 are also produced here. Their assembly is supervised by a team of specialist mechanics that is exclusively responsible for these race cars. The racing crew uses all 23 stations to build Lamborghini's racing monsters.
the two racing variants are 79% identical. The basis of the extreme sports cars, the frame, is the same as that of the production models. That's why they can be assembled at the same production line. Technological transfer is fundamental uh, from motorsport and road car and in the opposite way. Sometimes we could test or develop technical features or ideas or contents that could be used in the next future on the road car, but also the opposite. The Super Trofeo specialist team now installs the exhaust system. Naturally aspirated engines require valve-equipped mufflers because many racetracks have strict noise limits. With the valve in the exhaust, the Italians can regulate the Lambo's thunderous sound. At the same time, it can exhale normally. The mechanics of the production models and its racing variants work hand in hand every step of the way. Usually to build a race car, if you do it in a normal workshop with few mechanics, you need uh, from one week to two weeks. Doing that in the production line, uh, we are uh, today able uh, to build uh, uh, nearly six cars per week. This kind of procedure is quite particular and is a very good mix combination between the motorsport mechanics team and the production line mechanics team. The new racing car approaches the finish line. By now, it's easy to spot the differences between it and the production models. The Squadra Corsa team has added a roll cage as a protection in case of a crash a simplified steering wheel, a brake system with extra cooling, and an adjustable rear spoiler. Lamborghini's extreme sports model costs almost a quarter of a million euros. This matte black bull is now ready for the track. An employee pulls the Lambo out of the factory with a towing vehicle. For now, it's 550 horsepower lay dormant underneath the hood, waiting to be stirred to life on the track. The Huracan GT3 Evo is at the ready on the starting grid of the Nürburgring for the Blancpain GT World Challenge. Lamborghini's company driver, Bortolotti, goes over the strategy for the race once more with the crew. In the qualifying race, the 29-year-old already managed to stay ahead of the competition. Even this GT3, costing about 390,000 euros, was built on the basis of the production model. But a single glance into its interior shows you that this machine was built for maximum performance. In the GT3, we can adjust the ABS, we can adjust traction control, or even switch it off completely if need be. Most of the special features that I use to control the entire car are on the steering wheel. Then there's also a center console, where we have several extra features, like windshield wipers and things like that. If you get into this car, you will quickly recognize that it has nothing whatsoever to do with the road model of the Lamborghini Huracan. The company driver may be in pole position, but at the same time, he has the whole grid breathing down his neck. Only a few minutes to go before the flying start. The tension on the grid is rising. There's always pressure. It's our goal to achieve the best position. I prefer to start from the top of the grid rather than the back. It's perfect. We have to make use of it. What are your chances? Great. 28 racing cars will take off from the starting line. The pit crew have filled up the Huracan with 115 liters for the 31 rounds. The one hour race is underway. The Lamborghini can easily defend its lead. After 30 minutes, the first pit stop is due, a most delicate moment a wheel and driver change in only a few seconds. The Huracan reaches the pit lane. No wrong moves allowed here, for if the pneumatic screwdriver gets out of control, it may become a projectile. One wrong move and the lead could be lost. Only 20 seconds later, the second driver is on the track. 
done, the pit crew is relieved. The second driver can defend first position too, but during the last minutes of the race, he makes a mistake. He loses the lead position and comes in second. But the Italian Noble brand still wins. Another Huracan from an English team decides the challenge in its favor. On the winner's podium, the tension evaporates. The Lamborghini family is extremely satisfied. It's definitely very positive for the brand because it was a double win for Lamborghini. So I'm overjoyed about that because the guys at the factory work hard to make results like this possible. That's why I'm quite happy. On the other hand, it's unfortunate we didn't win here today. Still, I'm quite satisfied and happy. It was a good day. It's halftime in Santa Gata Bolognese for this orange-colored production series Huracan. A ceiling crane hoists the rather naked body of the car round the corner of the U-shaped assembly line. On its way back, the 10-cylinder car is fitted with doors, windows, a hood, and four wheel suspensions. Two employees assemble the carbon ceramic brakes. This composite material was rigorously tested by engineers using methods from aviation and aerospace industries. The robust material is twice as resilient as the toughest steel and capable of handling very high temperatures. Even after long or repeated braking, the brake force will remain constant. But it comes at a price. One set of carbon ceramic brakes costs 10,000 euros more than the standard version made of steel. To enable the Huracan to be flexible and adapt to all street conditions, it was given four separate wheel suspensions. They are not connected by an axle, so every single wheel can be controlled separately. This heavy bull, weighing about 1.4 tons with four-wheel drive and a special seven-speed dual-clutch transmission can hit 200 kilometers an hour in nine seconds. Good brakes are of vital importance for a powerhouse like this. The Lambo can come to a standstill from 200 kilometers an hour in 4.7 seconds. What's crucial for the Huracan's performance, apart from its technological components, is its adaptability to aerodynamic drag. It has an extensive aerodynamics kit, allowing it to become more or less one with the airflow. The front spoiler that is being installed here possesses several air intakes, a cooler and a so-called air curtain. They divert the wind underneath the car. Next, the mechanics will install the rear apron. It too is an aerodynamic part. It releases the airflow. Then the mechanics install the rear spoiler. The shape of this sort of rear spoiler is usually based on the rear part of a bird's back, the so-called rump. The vehicle should offer as little resistance to airflow as possible. When the airflow hits the Lambo front, it splits up. The aerodynamics kit diverts one part of the airflow underneath the car and the other part over the roof of the car. At the underside of the car, the air is compressed, gains speed and creates low pressure, thus sucking the car to the ground. Other parts, like the rear spoiler, direct the airflow over the car and press it onto the asphalt. This is the so-called Venturi effect. It creates better performance at low fuel consumption rates. Every detail of the vehicle's design is aimed at optimizing aerodynamics. To prevent the Italian car from lifting off at high speeds, it needs sufficient downforce. That's why the Huracan has slits and tubes on its body. They help press the Sprinter securely onto the asphalt. We have improved the downforce. We offer the airflow plenty of surface to cling onto, 
to keep the car earthbound, so to speak. The engine has much more power, so we need more intake air here, which is nicely controlled by the air curtain at the front. The airflow clings to the side of the car. We have created a new air intake here with this little wing. So what we do is use the hot air coming from the engine bay that flows to the rear through this opening. Add to that the airflow going over the car, which are called the Venturi effect, which creates more downforce here, so you have more downforce at the front and more downforce at the rear. In short, we vastly improved its aerodynamic efficiency. It's important for the vehicle's aerodynamics that all the parts have been fitted exactly. That's why this employee is using a wedge to check the clearance between all the installed elements. The tolerance values at Lamborghini are extremely strict. The Lamborghini brand relies on authenticity. The roughly 1,800 employees who work at the factory believe in the product and are therefore proud to work for the Italian sports car manufacturer. We are a young brand, a young company. The average age of the people inside is 38. We have a new factory, new processes, new technology. So it's a moment where a lot of uh, time we, has to be spent in order for them to understand and to be ready, to be really the, the, the ones that are hands on the product and minds on the product, making the, the, the right thing for, for, for our customers. Huracan is Spanish and means hurricane. And to enable this young bull to rip through the streets like a whirlwind, he will now be shod. These 20-inch Pirellis have been developed especially for him. Like most Lamborghini models, this untamed Italian was named after a hero from the world of bullfighting. In 1879, his namesake, the Spanish fighting bull, Huracan, fought undefeated in an arena in Alicante. Now the mechanic is mounting the special shoes from Milan onto the wheel suspension. These striking sports rims were also made especially for the angry four-wheel drive car. The most critical uh, problem that you have in a, a four-wheel drive system is to guarantee that uh, the, what is called rolling circumference between front and rear axis remaining constant. In a tire, you have one piece that touches the asphalt where you push it, but in the rest of the circumference, you have a, a centrifugal force that try to increase the diameter, and the, the difficulty is that front and rear must have the same level of increase of diameter. That is something uh, that is more or less kind of miracle. You can imagine how difficult it is, how sophisticated is the system of development, of production, and uh, of quality of this black piece of rubber. Its four-wheel drive keeps the Huracan Evo firmly on the road. Additionally, a differential channels power to each of the four wheels separately. When cornering, the inner wheels describe a smaller turning radius than the outer ones. So for ideal grip, they should rotate at a slower speed and the outer ones at a faster speed. Moreover, the active rear steering, ARS for short, makes the Lambo more agile and more stable at high speeds. Sharp bends and fast combinations of curves are therefore no problem for this powerhouse. Right beside the main assembly line, the mechanics prepare big assembly elements. This employee is working on the Lamborghini's characteristic tailgate. First, he applies a primer coat on the aluminum frame. Because the tailgate is also the engine hood, it has air intakes on both sides. They allow the cooling air to enter the engine bay. The mechanic evenly applies silicone glue to the pane before it is put in. The adhesive remains very elastic even when it has dried out, so the pane won't break from shocks when the car is moving. A vacuum lifter helps the mechanic fit the pane into the tailgate.
His colleagues attach the engine hood to the car at the main assembly line. The panes are made from laminated safety glass, which means that two layers of glass are kept bonded by a strong interlayer. It gives additional stability and makes sure that no sharp shards of glass can enter the inside of the car if the pane breaks. Lamborghini has been producing super sports cars in Santa Gata Bolognese since 1963. The first model to go into series production was the 350 GT. With its 270 horsepower and a top speed of 260 kilometers an hour, it was a sensation. The Lamborghini brand quickly attained international cult status. Company founder Ferruccio Lamborghini originally produced tractors, but he always had a passion for flat and fast cars. He realized a lifelong dream when he finally started producing sports cars himself. In the beginning, soft and elegantly curved lines dominated Italian supercars. The myth of Lamborghini is uh, for short connected to be unique and to be considered different from the others. That was the mission of Lamborghini since the, the first car. All the models that uh, were really iconic for example, Miura was the first incredible car, V12, unique and very clean shape that is to, still today a, a fantastic car. Then we can talk about LM002, the first real SUV from which model everyone took inspiration. Then we can talk about Diablo, the first sport car that used carbon fiber in this kind of segment. In the early 1970s, the Countach, which freely translates as madness, shocked the car industry with its angular and aggressive look. Its pop-up headlights, scissor doors, and V12 engine quickly made it into a trendsetter on the super sports car market. To this very day, every single new Lamborghini model has been molded on this design by Marcello Gandini. The basic form of the 1971 model is still clearly recognizable in the 2019 model. A further typical feature of Lamborghini design is the hexagon. If you look closely at a Lambo, you'll find honeycomb structures everywhere, inside and out. The air intake on the side of the car is like a small hexagon if you look at it closely. And you can find such hexagonal and Y-shaped forms all over the car. In its 56 years of company history, Lamborghini has produced about 50,000 sports cars. By way of comparison, this equals Toyota's production of a mere three days. 17 different production models have rolled off the line at the Italian factory. In 2017, the factory grounds near Bologna were doubled in size the sports car producers extended their production grounds from 80,000 to 160,000 square meters for their new production line. At station 18, the Huracan receives its interior. An employee fits the center console into the cockpit. The high tech in the interior of a Lambo equals that of a Formula One car. The driver can check and control technical details via a touchscreen. The Huracan is the Italian's first fully networked super sports car. The driver can analyze and adjust numerous data, like trip time, steering angle, and differential, via an app on a smartphone. The integrated system of the two-seater can even calculate driving maneuvers in advance and adjust the vehicle dynamic system accordingly. For this, the driver has several buttons on the steering wheel to choose between driving modes. If you select the sport, you tell to the car that you want to have fun. If you put a steering wheel and the accelerator in order to have a drift angle, the car will maintain the drift angle based on the steering angle that you can make the radius with a constant drift like if, you have, like if you are the best driver in terms of drifting of the world. And this really gives confidence and safety because nothing happened that is not under the control of the driver. The employees from pre-assembly prepare the doors of the sports coupe next to the main assembly line. 
Their colleagues at the start of the assembly line had removed them so they could easily access the interior of the lightweight body. Now, every pair of aluminum doors is equipped with hexagonal rear view mirrors. Then, the team of five puts in the cables for the power windows and the sound system. Other employees put in the side panes. Before the mechanic can install the doors, all the work on the interior of the Lambo has to be finished. First, one employee takes the sports car seats to the cockpit using a hoist. Then, his colleague can put the pre-assembled doors into the sports car with a vacuum lifter. These parts have all been spray painted in the same color as the car, and they have to be ready in time, so there's a tight schedule. The mechanic checks if the doors close properly while fitting them. The Huracan's doors open like normal car doors. Lamborghini's famous scissor doors are only used for the 12-cylinder engine models. In a minute, the crew of Station 22 will make the Huracan's heart beat for the first time. A mechanic charges the 12-volt battery and fills the coupe's fuel tank with 20 liters of gas. A quality controller checks all electronic functions, like the remote key and the headlights. Then he gets into the cockpit and tests every single switch and lever. In the meantime, his colleagues have installed an exhaust extraction hose and a cooling blower. And then the V10 of the Huracan is allowed to roar for the first time. The secret behind the sound is uh, making sure that the sound is real, not fake. So it's coming from the engine from the mechanical movement of the engine. Try to work on that respect in order to be real. Because, you know, with the amplifier, you can do whatever you want, but you feel the difference. Beside its distinctive design, Lamborghini's mythology mostly feeds on the full-bodied roar coming from the engine bay. Other manufacturers rely on a so-called sound symposer, an electronically controlled valve that directs the sound into the cockpit through a tube and amplifies it. The muscular sound of the Italian car is purely mechanical in origin. By means of a cleverly designed concept, Lamborghini's 10-cylinder engine composes its sound spectrum all by itself. It is perfected in the factory's separate sound lab, where the acousticians make the Lambo sound visible. This is what the Huracan's roar looks like. Red stands for extremely loud. The experts carry out several different tests to measure the ambient noise within and outside the car. For the first test, the acousticians place a dummy in the Huracan that corresponds with the geometry of a human's head and shoulders. Then, the engineers generate a sinusoidal tone through a loudspeaker and direct it at the car at changing frequencies or pitch. This simulates every possible ambient noise that can be caused by street sounds or vibrating car components. There is a microphone in each ear of the dummy. With these, the engineers record every sound event just the way a human being in the car would register them. We have an input signal, output signal, in this case, two position left and right ear. in the complete frequency domain from, in this case, from 100 up to 7,000 hertz, all the plots are inside the target, so it means the result is okay. In a further test, the acoustics professionals concentrate solely on the sound of the engine. For this, 
our test dummy is given a driver. He starts the V10 engine, and after idling it for a bit, he floors the gas pedal. The test driver works the gas pedal until he has tried each and every kind of acceleration and driving modus. The artificial head in the passenger seat sends the recorded engine sounds to the measuring system. The monitor now shows the experts in a graphic what the Huracan sound is composed of and if it is within the desired and typical Lamborghini parameters. It is usually a Lamborghini sound. It's really emotional and, and aggressive. We want really to design a proper sound for each model. The customer has to recognize a Lamborghini sound as something special, something different from others. There is one more distinctive feature that sets the Italian bull stable apart, which is its striking color spectrum. Ever since the 1960s, loud colors are part of Lamborghini's design DNA. The Huracan 2 is available in every color combination imaginable. To be honest, there is not a number of colors. You can have all the color you want. For us, it's a, a key factor to personalize the car. So we can really produce a car in the color that a customer wants, which can be, uh, let's say, a color of the bag of his wife, uh, a color of uh, whatever. Assembly line finish. A further Huracan Evo reaches the finish line of the production chain. The super sports car is now almost ready for delivery. But before that, the 184,000 euro Noble Coupe has to pass an extensive final inspection. The controllers of Station 23 meticulously inspect every single Huracan. But the crew doesn't wait to check if all components have been installed properly until the end of the assembly line. Every morning, the quality coordinator of the Huracan line and her team get together for a meeting. They discuss current problems in the ongoing process. Today, there are discrepancies in the clearances of this convertible. The problem here is the exact alignment of the door and the rear fender. The door and the rear fender do not line up precisely. One of the employees of this station will solve the problem and bring the door and the rear fender into perfect alignment. It's important that the crew find every flaw, but even more important that they find its cause. It's the only way they can keep optimizing the assembly process. First, you conduct a problem analysis. Is the problem a result of the assembly process, or is it a result of the quality of a single part? On the basis of this analysis, we can start looking for a solution. Either an experienced assembly line employee will solve the problem, or someone from quality control will carry out a closer inspection of the part in question. The customer wants a perfect vehicle, so the trained eye of the quality controllers can't afford to miss the tiniest of imperfections. The employees check every single clearance between neighboring parts. For this, the controllers adhere to a strict checklist. No Huracan Evo leaves the assembly line before these controllers give the go-ahead. After almost 14 hours, another Huracan has come into being at the Lamborghini factory. The brand new super sports car has to pass two more test stations, and then he can finally leave the factory. First, the Italian car is taken to this measuring station. It will have its wheels aligned here. The mechanic starts by checking the axle values of the car. He measures the position of each wheel individually and their relative position to each other with a laser. This shows the present state of the suspension setting. Using the vehicle's specifications, the mechanic can now set the toe and camber at the nominal value. 
To that end, he adjusts the wheel suspensions on the Huracan's underbody until the values are correct. The purpose of all this is to make sure the car drives in an exact straight line and is easy to handle. This means, as a rule, that all four tires must have as much contact with the road as possible, meaning parallel to each other and perpendicular to the road. If a wheel has positive or negative camber, the car will pull to the left or right, and its cornering stability may be compromised. Next, the new Huracan goes to the dynamometer. Here, a mechanic checks the 10-cylinder engine's output. The high-performance motor has to pass several acceleration tests. The engineer straps down the sports car with special slings so it won't bolt. Then the dual exhaust is hooked up to an extraction hose. Once the two-seater has been positioned correctly onto the rollers, it's ready to go. First, the mechanic accelerates the super sports car from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. He maintains that speed for a while. Then he accelerates further to 150 kilometers an hour. After 15 minutes, he has concluded all tests. This Lambo runs smoothly. No more improvements to the suspension setup or engine timing are necessary. Up until this moment, the inspectors needed free access to the underbody. Now it can be sealed. Once the mechanics have screwed on all the elements of the car's body, the Huracan is freed from the lift and released into the wild. Taming him is now the new owner's duty. Even though the subject of mobility is changing, the Italians believe in their brand. You know, everyone is talking about mobility you know, in this moment. But we are in a different uh, route. We are not talking about mobility. You don't buy a Lamborghini, you know, to, to move, uh, or, or not only to move from point A to point B. You take a Lamborghini, you buy a Lamborghini because you want to have fun. You want to drive the car. You want to have emotion with the car. And I do believe it will be even more important in the future because the emotional side of, of our mind will be always present. Lamborghini doesn't merely produce vehicles. The factory's 1,800 sports car experts have gasoline in their blood. The luxury cars that leave Santa Gata Bolognese are full of Mediterranean temperament. After more than 50 years in the history of the automobile, these fighting bulls still bring out the wild side in every sports car fan.